Circle theorems. Theorem 1. The first part of this theorem is that if you draw, or if there's a line from the centre of a circle to the centre of a chord, this line will always be perpendicular to the chord, despite where the chord is in the circle. Perpendicular basically means a line meets another line at a 90 degree angle. Another feature of this perpendicular line is that it also bisects the chord creating two equal length lines, like so, making length A, D the same distance as D, C. Now, the second part of this theorem is that an isosceles triangle is formed from when a chord joins the centre of a circle by two radii lines. Quick side note, we call these radii lines because any straight line from the centre of a circle to the circumference is called the radius, therefore meaning AB is equal to BC, as they are both radii. Now, if we bring back the perpendicular line, not only have we bisected the chord into two equal lengths, but also the isosceles triangle into two right angles with equal lengths and angles. So that means angles BAD and BCD are equal to one another. Also, angle ABD is equal to CBD. Now a question you could get based on this theory is if the perpendicular line YW bisects the chord XWZ and angle YXW is equal to 27 degrees, calculate the angle XYZ. Using the rule that all angles on a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we can find angle XYZ by subtracting angle WXY and angle WZY from 180. From the explanation previously, we can easily conclude that angle YXW is the same as WZY, both equaling 27 degrees. Therefore, angle XYZ is 180 minus the total of 27 plus 27, which is 126 degrees. Circle Theorems Theorem 2 This next theory is quite visual. If there are two radii lines, and they are both linked to the same point on the circumference, the angle at the centre of the circle is twice the size of the angle at the circumference. So to find the angle at the circumference, you would have to half the angle at the centre, and to find the angle at the centre, you would have to double the angle at the circumference. This works even if the point at the circumference moves around the circle, as long as points A and B are stationary. The angle at the circumference will always be half the size of the angle at the centre, regardless where the point of the circumference is, and the angle at the centre will always be twice the size of the angle at the circumference. For this theorem, either an arrowhead or double triangle shape is always formed. For example, what is angle ACB if angle ADB is equal to 22 degrees? Since we know the angle at the circumference will always be half the size of the circle, angle ACB will equal 22 times 2, which is 44 degrees. If the point of the circumference were moved here instead, would the angles change? The answer is no it will stay the same. The only time when this theorem doesn't work is when the point at the circumference goes beyond the two radii line points, no longer forming an arrowhead or double triangle, but a quadrilateral. 
When that happens, the angle at the circumference isn't equal to half the angle at the centre. To find this angle, we would have to use another theorem. We cover this in theorem number 4. Circle theorems. Theorem 3. If two radii lines are connected to each other and form a straight line, this line is the diameter of the circle. Now we know from the rules of straight lines that on a straight line the angles add up to 180 degrees. So it's safe to say the angle of the diameter or the angle at the centre of the circle is 180 degrees. If these two lines were linked to a point on the circumference, the angle at the circumference would be equal to 90 degrees, regardless of where this point is on the circumference. The angle will always equal 90 degrees. Now I know this probably feels like more theorems to learn, but there's an easy way to remember this one, and it relates back to theorem 2. So we know the angle at the circumference must equal half this angle at the centre, right? The angle at the circumference is 90 degrees. So the angle at the centre must equal double the size of the angle at the circumference. The angle at the centre of the circle is 180 degrees. So the angle at the circumference must equal 90 degrees. So in essence, this theorem is actually just an extension of theorem 2. One possible question we could have is, what is the size of angle A, B, C? If the diameter links to a point on the circumference, the angle is always 90 degrees. Circle Theorems Theorem 4 The opposite angles of the cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. It doesn't matter where the corners of the quadrilateral are on the circumference as long as they are all on the circumference and don't cross each other. If they do, we get something else which is explained in Theorem 5. So if we knew angle A, B, C was 50 degrees, the angle ADC would always be 130 degrees. Now a question we could have here is, if ACB was equal to 70 degrees, what would be the size of angle AEB? We now have a cyclic quadrilateral. The angles ACB and angle AEB must equal 180 degrees. So angle AEB equals to 180 minus 70, which is 110 degrees. If you like this series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new and in-depth videos, and most importantly, share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Don't see a topic you need help with? Suggest topics in the comment section below.